And welcome to the Steelers Depot Monday live stream here on, of course, this Monday, this Victory Monday for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they are fresh off a 24-16 win over the Carolina Panthers to move to 6-8 and eight on the year. And like the title of this stream says, still remaining alive in that playoff hunt. Still a long ways to go, but still alive and kicking. As always, Dave Bryant is here with me. Dave, how you doing? Doing good. Everybody hear me okay? Do, do an audio check right yep. up front here. We'll do our famous Steelers Depot audio tests. Everything should sound okay. If I sound weird, if Dave sounds weird, let us know, chat. And if we're good to go, then we have a lot of questions already in the chat uh, to get to. But I want to check the audio before we start answering them. You got your long johns uh, ready for this weekend, Alex? <laughs> it's good. Yeah. What, what are they saying for Sunday? Like eight degrees or something like that. And that's not even the windshield. That's just the regular uh, temperature. That, that's enough right there. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't happen out there in Vegas. I know it gets colder in Vegas than people think, but not eight yeah. degrees. No, no. And you will not find me outdoors in any anything that gets that, that cold. That's for sure. Ditto. All right. Audio sounds good. So as always, Dave and I are here till 8 p.m. Eastern time. You can send us questions about the Steelers, current, future, whatever is on your mind. If you want to have a guarantee of your question being asked and answered, it feels like we might have a larger chat here tonight than usual. You can send us a super chat and you will move to the front of the line and your question will be answered before Dave and I are done. No obligation to do so, but we appreciate any and all super chats. So we'll start things off with David Kapoor, who says, does anyone know what Deontay said to get called for taunting? Seems like guys talk trash all the time. What makes it crossing the line? Dave, I know the NFL has cracked down on this over the last two years, and we don't know exactly what Deontay said. But basically, if you're showing up a player at his face, if you're doing it in his line of sight, it's going to be a penalty that's basically the way the NFL is calling it these days yeah I, it, it looked like a tv replay I mean he was you know he was right on top of him and saying something like what 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 or you know I, I it's hard to know for sure it, it's it's more uh act you know action and, and look of I guess deliberate you know trying to show him up as you said so I I, I don't know exactly uh what he said but uh man it, it was a big it was a big penalty that fortunately they were able to overcome because had they not, uh, it would be even more, you know, even a bigger discussion uh, today than it already is. And, you know, thankfully for him, uh, Marcus Allen said, hold my beer <laughs> <laughs> later in the game there. So, yeah, you hate to see it, you know, on the heels of all that, that this team has gone through over the years. A whole, you know, Chase Claypool pointing at a, you know, pointing first down late in the Vikings game last season. And uh, this kind of, you know, just just make the catch and go back to the auto, you know. Yeah, uh, that's what you want to see. Basically, my interpretation is if you're going to celebrate in a player's face, in an opponent's face, or jaw at him, you're running a risk of a taunting penalty. So they'd certainly crack down on that. Now, luckily for both Deontay Johnson and Marcus Allen, the Patriots receiver Jacoby Myers said, hold my clam chowder, and had that crazy play there that uh, makes all this forgotten, at least from the NFL perspective. Of course, Steelers fans not going to forget what uh, Johnson and Allen especially did. Have a very generous $20 super chat from our friend Double H8 says, Happy Holidays, a gift for Trevor Kazora and Mrs. Kazora circa 2024. There's a, lo there's a lot I like in that and a lot I don't like in that statement there from Double H8. So um, I'm just trying to get through the Raiders game is kind of where I'm at, but uh, appreciate the super chat. Yeah, appreciate that. All right, Lumberzak94. Hey, fellas, what would uh, you guys pick as the single biggest need for the team going into the offseason where things stand right now with that choice? If you had your way, who would you want, draft or free agent? Man, that's a big picture question. I know the, answer, both... the answer is yes. No, you gotta you gotta answer the question. If you had to pick uh, one thing, uh, pick pick position wise. Single biggest need. I, yeah, I take it as position, and would you want that addressed in the draft or free agency? Is my interpretation of the question. Man, man, right now, uh, I don't. You know, you look at Tyson Alualu going to be gone after this year. You look at who knows what's going to happen with Larry Ogan Joby. Uh, during the off season, you look at uh, Chris Wormley's injury. You look at Louder Milk. Uh, you know, really looking just more like a uh, a depth a depth player. You know, at at, at best right now. Uh, I, 
it's got to be in the trenches, in my opinion, from where I sit right here today. Now, obviously, things can change in a hurry and all. And we'll see how many of their own, you know, see if they what they address. I, I would like to see them address the position during the draft. That seems to be their, where they've had their best, uh, you know, unless Javon Hargrave comes open or something like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, you know I, and I suppose, you know, I, I don't know if that's going to be a possibility. You would think that the, that the Eagles might have sights on, on, on getting him redone or something. But uh, uh, outside of, let's say, a Javon Hargrave, I, I, I would like to see this thing uh, addressed during the draft. So I would go, you know, interior defensive line right now. I think that's uh, going to be one of the more popular answers, and I agree with you, but I'll go the other way and say just left guard. This team has to run the ball. They're going to be built around running the ball for the next four or five years, you would guess, and I think just the frustration of Kevin Dawson, a talented player who makes plays that I thought played well against Carolina, one of his better games of the year, but I'm going left guard. I'm probably going day two on the draft. That's where I'm thinking right now, but again, there are so many ways to answer that. It's really hard to, to give an exact, concrete, confident answer. You guys could uh, like this live stream. Would really appreciate that. More people that like it, more people that come in, see the channel, can can uh, hang out with us as you guys are. So you could uh, drop a like. I know it's such a, a cliche YouTuber thing to say, um, but would really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Ross Swisher says, Alex and Dave, who would you rather be extended, Highsmith or Terrell? Well, there Edmonds is a pending for agent. Highsmith under contract through 2023. I think there's certainly a case to be made for Edmonds to come back to be resigned. But I am certainly in the camp of let's try to get an extension done with Alex Highsmith next summer. I, I yeah, I would as well too. And look, I mean, you can have both if you really wanted it. Now, there's there's you know going to be a minimum that you're going to put on what you would want for a guy like Terrell Edmonds to be re-signed, uh, and you know you have to go into that re-signing with the idea that you know you pay him just enough where uh, you know you you can go a different direction as far as a starter goes or something like that. Now, obviously you got Demonte Casey, uh, that you got to uh, think about as well too. I, you know, if they can do it, I'd like to see them, you know, try to resign both those guys on, on the cheap, right. if, if at all possible, uh, you know, and we'll see what price tags are. I mean, it might come down to one or the other, who knows here. But, uh, once again, if, you know, uh, it, it all depends on price with either one of those two. Now with uh, Highsmith, you know whether or not you get an extension done will obviously come down uh, to prices price as well too. And as Alex and I talked about on the podcast, you know what what is that? What will that price be? I mean, you, you look at uh, yeah, I just pulled a list this afternoon, Alex. Of uh, there are what twenty uh, players in the NFL since the start of the 2021 season who have registered 17 or more sacks. 20 players on that list. There's three Steelers on that list. Javon Hargrave is also on that list, by the way. Mm, but uh, three three Steelers on that list. Uh, T.J. Watt, obviously. Alex Highsmith and Cameron Hayward. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think they're – and look, I mean, he's a good kid. I, he's done everything. He's progressed at, at, at the way that you want him to. Uh, if you if the two sides can meet at a, at a realistic number with him, uh, I think you try to get something done with Alex Highsmith this off season. Yeah, I'm with you. Now, the, as you said, the price, the number, something to, to talk about. It's not 100% settled, but to the question, and I know the question was, who would you rather? But obviously, as you said, David, it doesn't have to be either or. You can do both, and that's certainly in the realm of possibility. $5 Super Chat from our friend Tim Chase. Happy holidays. Tim says, what's up with William Jackson the third? Obviously, he was placed on IR a week after acquiring him with that back injury. He is eligible to return, has been for at least a week now, but, you know, Wednesday is kind of the day to check on those type of things, and so far Jackson has not been designated to return and begin practicing. So with three weeks left and him probably needing three weeks to get back and get his legs under him, hasn't played since week five, I'm guessing we're not going to see William Jackson ever play in a Pittsburgh Steelers uniform. Did they, they opened his window, didn't they? No, not that I'm aware of, unless it happened today. Um they have not I, can't, opened. I can't remember if they opened his 21-day window or not. Maybe, ch- maybe they didn't. Yeah, I can check the chat, but I know there was a conversation about it, and Tomlin said, you know, we'll evaluate. But to my recollection, they've never actually opened that window on Jackson practicing again. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember if they did or not. I guess they didn't uh, with him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, whenever they do, uh, they would have 21 days 
uh, to uh, uh, to obviously put them back on the on on the 53 man roster. But I mean, we're talking now <laughs> three weeks. What you know, three games left in the season. Uh, it, it would have to happen this week with him getting basically returning to practice, and he had to get his legs up underneath him and. Uh, go from there. So it, it's it's not looking good for him. I thought for sure I, I remember seeing something. We we've had so many of these guys come back though, uh, from you know to have their window open. So I guess they didn't do it with him. Mike Adesso, I don't believe you mentioned on the podcast, but how about Edmonds pancaking Icky? Wow, that was impressive. And an unrelated note: would love to lock him up to an affordable three year extension this off season. Yeah, that play looked a lot cooler live than if you watched the All-22. Aquanu tripped over the left guard's leg, and so Edmonds, you know, he <laughs> pancaked him, but there's some context there in terms of the extension. I don't think it'd be three years even if they do re-sign Edmonds, but uh, an extension of some sort, maybe two years, I think makes sense for him. Uh, yeah, uh, possibly. I mean, I you know, could... Uh... Has he done enough this year that you could you couldn't get away with another one year deal, sort of similar to to what he did last year? I mean, there there obviously would probably be some guaranteed uh, money in in involved in it, you know, more so this time around, I would think. So uh, it would have to be a two year deal, you know, some similar to you know the the way they kind of treated Tyson Alualu, you know, probably not the same money, obviously, you know, uh, inflation and all like that and all, but uh it might be somewhere along the two uh two year deal, but I mean, you know, what's the max per year that you're looking to pay a guy like that? I mean, you've got two guys in Levi Wallace and Akella Witherspoon that you just uh this past off season, you said those guys were worth worth 4 million dollars per, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh uh, one of them might, one of those guys might need to go, and it probably ain't going to be Wallace, if you know what I'm saying. But sure. uh, uh, if you're saying those guys are worth worth four million, is 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 Edmonds along the lines worth the same amount now, three to four million? Yeah, it's a good conversation. It was obviously signed for ultra cheap uh, late, you know, right before the draft this this past off season. I imagine his value will have gone up some. The reason why I say a two year deal is just because you don't want to keep going year to year and uncertain about some sort of long term future. And with Wallace being a free agent after next year and Witherspoon, same if he's around that long, you kind of want to stagger those things a little bit. But you know, we'll see. It's not going to break the bank no matter what the the terms of the deal are. Here, here, here's the thing to think about as well too. You know, if you if you if you uh, bring him back and, you know, with the notion that this guy, you know, you're, you're welcome to compete for the job, you know, starting job. What if he doesn't win it? Uh, is he, is he, uh, you know, special teams material at his age? You know, you would think he is, but he is, he has been around a while now. Yeah. I mean, he's playing special teams right now, even as a starting strong safety. I mean, there's a few guys have played more snaps in football over the last five years than Terrell Edmonds. So, you know, the money, the, you could justify him being a backup or, or a sub package type player, even if uh, he doesn't become your starting strong safety. I would think no more than four million, and that might be pushing it four million per. Yeah, I think that probably sounds about right. So, just to remind, if you guys could like the stream, would really appreciate that, and also appreciate the two dollars super chat from Todd Williams. I do not see any associated uh, text there in terms of that super chat or anything surrounding it. If I see something from Todd, I will certainly get to that as soon as I can. But thank you so much. Uh, Mutated Genome says, Hi, Alex and Dave. What are your expectations for Mark Robinson next season? What does he need to do to become a day one starter? It was good to see Robinson out there. I thought he played well in limited action. What are your thoughts, Dave? I think it's way too early to tell right now. Sure. He played seven snaps. <laughs> Those yeah, not four. First, played seven. Uh, right. Played <laughs> seven snaps uh, in that game against Carolina. That was his first official defensive side of the football <clears throat> action there. Uh, I mean, it's, it's way too early to tell. I mean, obviously... You would you would hope that he does enough, you know, next year during camp and and uh, shows enough during the preseason and all that 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 you know. And we'll see how the how the how the off season shakes out and all with uh, you know the, at the inside linebacker position. But you know, at worst, you would hope he would be a guy that could be in the rotation to to get some defensive snaps next year. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's way too early to tell to sit here and say, well, this guy's played seven snaps against Carolina uh, and whatever he played in the preseason and go ahead and anoint him the starter next year. You just, you can't do that. There's not enough tape on him. Sure. I think next summer will be critically important to Mark Robinson. I think maybe a Robert Spillane role, the way Spillane's occupying that role this year could be the thing for Robinson top back up playing in some, 
sub package, you know, run heavy looks, three five and uh, things like that is kind of my thought with him. But Devin Bush, if he's a free agent and Spillane is restricted, I imagine he'll be back. But we'll have to see on that. Some some lanes could open up. We'll see if Pittsburgh addresses things uh, in the offseason. That's a question from Bruce Myers, who says if Bush is not re-signed, does off ball linebacker become top of the list in the draft? Maybe Trenton Simpson, if he's there where they pick. I think you still build this thing inside out. D line before trenches is kind of or D line before inside linebacker is my thought. And I think you got to be open. Look, they're not going to be able to fill. There's going to be a lot of needs on this team, folks. I mean, there is going to be a lot of needs, and they're not going to be able to fill all of them via the draft. Uh, they're just not. Uh, they're going to have to address some of this during in free agency. So maybe inside linebacker is a position that you can put up high uh, uh, in free agency, right? You know, they've done and, it before. And, They're getting good at <laughs> signing yeah. those guys, uh, although a little bit higher quality, you know, th- this time around, you know, maybe actually spend some some although Miles Jack wasn't cheap, you know. Right. Uh, but, you know, he's still got another year left on his deal. And you would think that he's done enough, you know, to be back. Uh, but, you know, who, who's going to play alongside him is, is a real question. So uh, I I. I Here's my thoughts now on inside linebacker too. I mean that that's kind of a position. Yeah, man, I I I think that can be found in in you know the third, second, and third rounds. I I don't want to see this team go after another inside linebacker uh, anytime soon in the first round. I don't think. Uh, and once again, this team has just got a lot of areas that they've got to address this year. So you know maybe that's a position that you address in free agency. Sure, it may very well be. I don't know what names are out there. I think one we'll talk about in a second. That's going to be a bit more pie in the sky. When I say they're getting good at it, I mean they're doing it a lot, not necessarily right. that they're hitting on those ones. Jack's been okay. I think he's played worse since the bye. He's been injured. Um, and as Ross Swisher's pointing out, there is a lack of splash from from both, really all the off-ball sure. linebackers, and, and that's an issue there. You saw what the Ravens guys can do. They're more talented players, but you're lacking that splash for sure. Uh, Todd Williams had a question after that super chat says, what is our greatest position of need in the draft? That was similar to the first question that we asked and answered. We're both in agreement trenches. Now you can really throw a dart and find needs corner inside linebacker, strong safety. What happens in terms of free agents who stays, who goes is going to dictate a lot who they add in free agency will also dictate a lot of what holes are there come draft time. So it's really hard to answer that now knowing how much can and will change until April, but trenches is, is where this team has to build. They have to go inside out. And look, they usually paint the numbers pretty good for you starting in March, right? You know, uh, so what they address in free agency, you can usually whittle this thing down to kind of the, the positions they might go uh, in the draft. But, uh, uh, you know, I have, I obviously had defensive line high on my list. Alex has offensive line. If they don't go defensive line, I do hope they go offensive line. I'll and tell you they, that. If they don't go O line, I hope they go D line. <laughs> right. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I think that's where Alex and I are are at at this time here. And I know everybody's going to say, "Boy, we need a shutdown corner and and all like that." I mean, what good does it do you uh, uh, to have you know to spend a first round pick on 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 you know whatever cornerback is your favorite right now? Uh, if a you don't let that kid travel. In other words, you'll follow teams' other best receivers around. And if you don't have a pass rush better than what you do have now, and if you can't stop the run, you know, uh, uh, it just it, to me it doesn't make sense to build from the back of your your defense uh, uh, moving forward here. And you know, I kind of uh, relate that to kind of what they did with the whole Najee Harris thing. No, I don't hate Najee Harris, but uh, I would have I would have fortified that line uh, before I did anything. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I really think the running back position is a fungible uh, type position. Now, I don't think cornerback obviously is as fungible uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I would like to see them address up front, either defensive or offensive line is from where I sit right now. And I think that's the approach assistant GM Andy White was going to take in terms of building this team. That's how they built it in Baltimore, how they built it in Philly. And I think that's how they're going to build things in Pittsburgh. Our friend Jason with a question. Good to hear from you, Jason. Happy holidays. Says, hello, Dalex. I admit it. I'm living in my fears. I'm very concerned about both Muth and number eight dealing with multiple concussions so early in their careers. Talk me off the ledge, please. It's a concern. Absolutely. I mean, Firemuth has now had, I think, technically three in two years and Pickett's had two this season. And I don't know what he had in college, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not where you want to be, obviously. Now, each concussion's different and a guy, you know, 
they range on the spectrum of of severity and you know one guy suffers multiple concussions and that can change his career and one guy suffers them and and he's you know relatively okay so it's a concern you just trust the doctors are, are doing a good job pittsburgh has a good medical staff and really not much you can do not much you can avoid that happening i think pickett changed his helmet to maybe try to decrease some of those things but outside of the equipment type stuff you just you go through the process you get cleared and you hope for the best Absolutely. I, and I, I'm not going to pretend that I know, uh, uh, you know more than the next person about concussions. You are Dave Bryant, MD, though, right? I think uh, I'm, a groin, I'm a groin, groin specialist. specialist. Okay, yeah. I think Miles Jack is in to, to see you this week. Uh, All right, next question comes from uh, Narcissist Bull. Do we sign Larry O next year? That's a great question. I don't know where I come in on that. I'm leaning towards no, but there's cases to be made. It, it depends on the week because I thought he had a great game against Carolina, probably his best game of the season in a Pittsburgh Steelers uniform, but I think he's been plagued by some injuries. He's gotten older. You know, how much is he going to cost? He got $8 million this year. That's probably the floor for any sort of long-term deal. I'm probably going no on Larry O. Yeah, it depends on the price with him. And, boy, he's going to be looking for another payday after missing out on a th- on that three-year deal last year with the Bears that would have kind of set him really for the rest of his NFL career. Uh, be careful is all I got to say. And uh, I think there will be plenty of people out there uh, if he stays healthy the rest of the season, and, 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 and especially if he plays like he did uh, in the first half against Carolina. Uh you know, there's I think he's going to have suitors out there. So, uh, you know, just from where I sit right now, I, I, I would, my guess would be is that he won't be back. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too. But I think that one is, is much more on the fence than some other names we'll talk about throughout. Steel is announcing, by the way, they will wear their uh, block uniforms, I think with a patch as well for Franco Harris in this anniversary game. So that'll be uh, pretty cool to see on what should be a chilly Christmas Eve. Uh, question here from Brian Tolini. Better chance J.J. Watt joins T.J. or we re-sign Edmonds and add Tremaine Edmonds in for agency. Tremaine would look great in black and gold. I think both are probably pretty unlikely. I think it's more likely Tremaine just because he fits what Pittsburgh looks for, what they like, the pedigree guy, the athlete, the, the bloodlines, obviously Terrell and, and Trey Edmonds as well, both uh, have been Steelers in their career. But I think Buffalo probably wants to hold on to that combination of uh, Edmonds and Matt Milano. Yeah, I probably do. Uh, has he been having to see? He's missed some time this year with injury, hasn't he? Has he? That sounds right. I don't know the whole situation up there, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I, and I, maybe that's kind of – I don't think he's making some of the plays maybe that he was making – uh, uh, previously, he's a big kid, man. You want, uh, you want to talk about uh, what is he six? What does he go like six three or something? I think so. Yeah, I mean, a great athlete. He came out. He was twenty one years old coming out of college. I mean, and he's like twenty five now, so really right. young. Um, yeah, he's a, he's got some measurables on him for sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's a name that will be discussed just because of the tea leaves, the connections. But let's see if Buffalo. Six, re- he's six five. Yeah, he wow. can be six five. No. Uh, that's what PFF has him listed. No, he's got to be more like out. six four or something. Maybe six uh, four. Nice, uh, his uh, looking at some of the stuff they have on him. Uh, his run defense hadn't been all that this year uh, at times, and I think he has missed a uh, handful of games in here this year. Okay, again, a name that I'm sure will come up. Uh, the first stage, though, is will Buffalo resign him? If he gets to free agency, then you can have a serious conversation about that. But that is the first hurdle to get through. Uh, Mike Adesso, how many more years do you see Hayward on the roster? Who's going to replace him as leader in the locker room and community? Are they even on the roster yet? Sure, would like Clemson t- uh, defensive tackle Brees, Cam Clone on and off the field. Yeah, with Hayward, who knows? He's still playing at a high level to me. I look at what Clayus Campbell's doing in Baltimore at 36, still playing unbelievable football. So that's kind of the guide in terms of the best case scenario. Um, who's going to replace him as that leader? Yeah, that guy may not be there right now. Um, you know, TJ Watt, I think, is a more of a quiet leader, but certainly grown. Alex Highsmith, I think, is, is ascending into that role. Beyond that, you know, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Yeah, I think, I mean, Cam's got a couple more years left in him, I think. At least, at least one more pass this year, I would think. I think so too. Um, six six zero oh, four four six zero oh, four and wow. a half yeah. for uh, Tremaine Edmonds two fifty three at the combine. Unreal, yeah. That's that's a Tomlin guy for sure. But will he get out? Of, will he get get out of free agency or two free agency is going to be the the question there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Orlando Brown would be nice, but dude will get twenty million plus. Yeah, I thought about Orlando Brown as a tackle. I don't think he's had a great year in Kansas City, so I don't know 
And he wants to be a left tackle only, so that's, I, I don't think what Brown's going to be the answer. Is uh, my boy uh, David uh, with the Titans, uh, is he going to be a free agent? Uh, he's a uh, lineman? Uh, no, linebacker. Oh, Long, David Long. I believe yeah, he is. Yeah. Yes. I don't know for sure, but somebody gave me he, a... He's the one that I thought <laughs> the Steelers should have drafted over Devin Bush. Remember mm. that conver- yeah, conversation I was having, having about him? I don't know if he's going to be... I can't remember if he's going to be a free agent or not, but... Uh, Look, uh, once again, this this team needs to needs to go out of its norm. I mean, they they went obviously went out of their norm. They had high volume uh, number of signings, you know, la- uh, free agent signings last year, right? But uh, you know, look look at the back end of the list on some of those. You know, Gunnar Olszewski and I don't know. Go 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 down the list there. A lot of those were were were, were a lot cheaper. They need to spend some money this time this off season. And and from a cap perspective, they should be able to finagle however they want to finagle because they can restructure what if they need to. Uh, we'll see if there's any any cuts that wind up you know clearing a few million here or there or whatnot. But uh, there is absolutely if they want to turn this thing around in a hurry. In other words, uh, be, be have themselves a Super Bowl you know. Com- caliber team in 2023 once again they're not going to do it all through the draft they're going to have to do it through free agency as well agreed let me put you on the spot here dave if you're ready for it james daniels he signed what was his average yearly value 12 like million 10 something wasn't it 10 it? was it lower i can remember if it was 10 if that's what a, i know a core for got 10 but okay so Dave will call daniels around 10 will the steelers sign a free agent that's worth more than 10 million per year or not what do you think they do uh Yes, they have to. You think so? Yeah, they have to. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I think they have to. I mean, I, everybody should be disappointed if they don't with the, uh, and obviously that won't be his cap charge, you know. Sure, because, but just because of a multi-year deal and sure. all like that. But uh, all, all that, all that aside, uh, it feels like they have to, man. I think so too. It's hard to know who, and my answer could change. But where we sit today, this team will have a, a lot of cap space. I think they're going to be aggressive under Con and White of building this roster and their vision really for the first time after being hired so late in the process of the 2022 offseason. Um, question for you, Dave AJC: How much salary cap will the Steelers have in the offseason? Oh man, we're not even to, uh, hang hang tight with me here because uh, uh, this time of year. You know, you, you, you're getting through the end of the year. I'm going to have a full uh, cap update here uh, right after the season ends uh, overall. And look, you know, a lot of stuff that you read on 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 over the cap and stuff like that. You know, you got to build out a what what I what I like to do with my projections is I like to build out a mock rule of 51 first, right? And I like to use like second year salaries in there because that helps offset you know, uh, things throughout the off season. So that gives you a, 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 a good starting point there with having kind of a mock rule of 51. Now, obviously they've already got what 30 something players, uh, 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 under contract next year. And then you kind of move forward from there. And, and here's the thing, there's a report, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks ago that, uh, expected this, you know, salary cap to be even higher than what, what they originally thought. So we're kind of waiting on a little bit firmer number on that. Is it going to be, you know, people saying now that it's not going to be 220 million. It might be two, 225 million might be 230 million, you know, the way some of these people are talking here. So let's let these let final three weeks of the season kind of get by us here. Uh, and find out how much rollover they're going to have from from 2021, and I'll be able to paint you as I'll, I'll be, I mean, for for those of you that read the site and listen, you know I'll try to paint you mm-hmm. as clear a picture as I can, starting really you know the, the the week after the season starts because that's when I start get back into heavily tracking that almost on a daily basis. In to the penny, that's what Dave will do. Right. To the penny, you will know the, what the cap situation looks like in projections. Obviously, won't know final numbers until the salary cap has actually been set for 2023. But short answer, they should have plenty of money to do basically anything they would like to do. They should be restricted uh, the way they were for so many years. And once again, I mean, you've got the ability to to uh, to restructure, you know, a guy like Watt if you wanted to, right. you know. And so uh, they'll they'll have the ability to do whatever they want to do. It's just what to to what degree measures do they want to go about about doing that? And you know, there's another question. You know, is is you know what are they going to do with Mitch Trubisky? If Mitch Trubisky stays, that's an eight million dollar salary uh, on the books. If he goes, well. You obviously you have to have a backup quarterback, you know, or can can you bring in, 
you know, someone that that's you you know that you can work with for you know half that amount, or would you be respending that same eight million dollars on the same same you know caliber player there? So that's something else to think about there. Which direction they're, they're going to go with the uh, with with the backup quarterback because that's you know that's one of the higher cap charges that this you know top ten right now I think uh, in cap charges that this team will have uh, on in 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 2023. Maybe 2023 will be Jacoby Brissett's year to come to Pittsburgh. My hopes mm. and dreams. Not that it was ever my dream, but just made a lot of sense based on the NC State connection between essentially the entire Steelers offensive staff. Uh, Randy, I mean, you and look, I mean, you are. Uh, we got to see, you know, what's going to happen. We don't think William Jackson's going to be back ahead of 12.75 <laughs> uh, number there. Uh, you would think that's going to be off the books here fairly soon. Uh, you know, if you, I don't think they would restructure Deontay Johnson. He's not going to go anywhere. Uh, if you need be, you could restructure the contract of Minka as well, too. So there's, True. there's, there's money to have to be had there. I mean, your top cap charges right now in 2023 are 29.3, a little more than 29.3 for TJ Watt, uh, 22.25 for Cameron Hayward. Uh, Minka has an $18 million cap charge. Deontay has a 16.333. Uh, and then going on down the list here, Miles Jack, 11.25. Jaquama Core 413.03. James Daniels, 11.1. And then you get into that Mitch Trubisky range, I think, or uh, range at uh, 10 point. Uh, 625 cap number uh, there. So there'll be some decisions to be made. And, and uh, you know, what are you going to do with a Keller Witherspoon? There's $4 million there, you know? Sure. And could you restructure Boz if you wanted to with his new deal? Is there money to, uh, to move there? I mean, there's, he's got a base salary of, I mean, there's not, you're not going to no. free up much. He's got a base salary of 2.74 million and he's got a roster bonus due of 1.3. So, I mean, technically you could take that $1.3 million roster bonus and, uh, what, you know, you million and a, a million and a half of the base salary and take, uh, say 2.8 million, turn that into a signing bonus and then spread that out, out over the four. You're not going to save much money that yeah. way. All right. Fair enough. But again, a lot of space and, and be sure to follow Dave's recap, uh, and, and first look, uh, after the season ends. All right. Back to the questions here. Have a ton of them. Randy Wagner, Mark Robinson looked pretty good yesterday being aggressive and, and filling up the holes. Uh, was it his first game, and where has he been all season? Third game, second in which he's played. First time he's gotten defensive snaps. It was the Bucks game, the Colts game he dressed for, but first snaps came against Carolina. Listen, he was a seventh-round rookie that, that played well, had a good summer, but was playing running back two years ago at you know Presbyterian or wherever he was at, Southeast Missouri. So this guy needed some time. It was a, it was a good showing, but it was a very specific package he was playing and allowed him to play downhill. Actually, once the live stream ends, I found one negative play from Mark Robinson in coverage. I want to show, I think, him understanding nuances in coverage and being raw there, which is expected. One of the reasons why he wasn't playing much and had to work his way up the ladder. So uh, patience. I, I caution patience with Mark Robinson. Absolutely. And you know, once again, seventh round pick. I mean, you hope this thing turns into something, but. You know, and, and it was good, obviously, to see him out there running around and getting some defensive snaps for the first time. But there, there's just not enough tape there to analyze just yet. So, uh, who you know, we'll see what's going to happen in these final three games. What what happens if, if that groin is, of, of Miles Jack is better uh, this week? People are going to be disappointed <laughs> as all get out if you turn around on 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 Saturday night and and uh, uh, Mark Robinson's you know one of the five or seven inactive players that they have. Right, absolutely. Um, and I'll have a video on Mark Robinson, though, in the morning that'll show some of the plays and a, bit, a brief breakdown on that because I knew people would want to get some inkling on him, but as Dave says, long ways to go. David O, our own David O, says, Dave and Alex, what current Steeler do you believe will be lost to free agency that you wish would be retained? I don't know if there's one name that comes to <laughs> mind. <laughs> and then some of the comments in the chat said that. Maybe Edmonds. I mean, I wouldn't be mad about that in terms of the cost to replace him versus the cost of just re-signing him, but... Cam, I mean, Cam Sutton, I don't know if he will be lost, but if you lose him, he's not irreplaceable, but he does a lot for your defense. Uh, i tell you what, uh, what's the old uh, Benny, uh, I forget the comedian, the old, uh, this is uh, this will show my age, and I know David O will probably know the, uh, yeah, the only my, two. Uh, take my wife, please, you know, uh, <laughs> ki kind of thing. There's not many that I'm going to, uh, would, 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 would lose a lot of sleep over, uh, if they, if they were lost to, uh, to unrestricted free agency. And man, there's a long list that this there team's going to have, uh, 
Cameron Sutton's one guy that I that I think is just kind of head and shoulders above everybody else on this long list of unrestricted free agents that the Steelers are going to have. He's a guy that I think that you've got to you got to really try hard to re-sign him because if you don't, what are you going to do? You know, sure. uh, and it's not like, you know, Cameron, you know, you mentioned Cameron Sutton and people say, oh, yeah, I know who uh, or, or you'll think think of him as a pro bowler. But I mean, he is the best that they really have in that secondary right now. And I just think they got to re-sign him. So I, I guess I'd be the most hurt if they if he walked. Now, obviously, price is everything. If someone's willing to overpay, then then there's a line that you draw there. But uh he 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 would be the only one that I'm I I I I would really you know question let walk. I do want to throw out one other name here, but before I do that, just one last call out to like the uh, the channel or in and, and like the video and subscribe as well. And you guys can see more videos, analysis, and the the bi uh, weekly uh, live streams that Dave and I do. How about Zach Gentry, free agent? Not that he's irreplaceable, um, like Cam Sutton, but that big blocking tight end that's carved out a, a pretty niche and important role for this now run heavy Steelers team. Look, I, I mean, he has come a long way, right? I mean, he was a guy that we talked about before, I think, before last season, right? Thought, hmm, this guy's kind of questionable, is it, you know, because he was obviously uh, injured his first two years, I think, and and just really didn't didn't look much of a blocker at all. Uh, I'm I'm not losing sleep over him, but I, I there is obviously he would have to be replaced in some way, shape, or form because Connor Hayward's not that guy. Uh, to do the things that they asked Zach Gentry is. So yeah, you could uh, quite honestly, you could if you if you if you put a list as far as what the Steelers' priority should be, you know, it's probably Cam Cam Sutton's obviously one, uh, maybe Gentry's two A or two B, depending on what you think of Casey or or Edmonds or something along those lines uh, there. So, but. Uh, I, Look, he, he's not he is not Matt Spath, right? No. No, he's not. But you'd have to find a guy like him right. because they like the value of that. It's, it's not a six offensive lineman, so you can do some you know pass game stuff with him. It's not this giant red flashing light of, hey, you're really going max protect and throwing it deep, or we're going to run the ball like you would with a six offensive lineman. Um, but it's still that big body that can defend some of these four or three teams, multiple defenses. That's becoming more and more common. Uh, you see that in the Bengals, and, and, that, and that's important to have. Here's the, here here's the thing uh uh with him I mean I mean or, or what I was talking about with Matt Spath I know that's a dirty word sometimes to say Matt Spath but man that guy doesn't get enough credit for the kind of blocker he was you know it uh throughout his career and all and uh this team and you know and and it it kind of feel you know will Pat Frymuth get how much better will Pat Frymuth get as an end of the line blocker you know Mm -hmm. Uh, and how much more ceiling does Zach Gentry have? Uh, look, I'm I'm not saying they shouldn't resign him, obviously, but uh, there is there is a certain price on that. Sure, and uh, you know Jesse James, remember when he got overpaid by Detroit, and you just lose him because mm -hmm. you just can't afford him. But you'll also miss Grillin and Chillin if Gentry's gone, and and Pat Friday was BFF, and you can't you can't have those two apart. Those, those two are, are are peas in a in a pod, right? I yeah. mean, they they're freaking frack, really. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to imagine as we sit here with three games left, those two not being on the roster together next next season. Agreed. Uh, I think the stat on Matt Spath, maybe someone can check me, I think he had more catches his final year at Minnesota than he had his entire NFL career, which spanned like 11 years, I want to say. Because he won he won the uh, John Mackey Award uh, in right. his last year for the top tight end in college football, which is a crazy right. thing for a guy that was a functionally an offensive lineman in the NFL. Right. Uh, I, I refreshed the uh, chat and I lost some of the questions, so I apologize. I saw there was a comment from Frank V, and I was itching to get to it. I don't have it uh, to read verbatim, but he said that uh, David Tepper threw the game yesterday, the Panthers owner, to do his old buddy uh, Art Rooney a favor. And so he nah. believes in the conspiracy, which is going around for what happened in the Washington game. I don't believe any of that stuff, but not a good look for the refs yeah. overall. But uh, I don't. I promise you, David Tepper not throwing a game, which Carolina needed to stay in this playoff race. I'm not buying it. Uh, John Horvat, hey, Alex and Dave, what do you think the bigger need or bigger weakness is? I guess it's also the biggest need, the O-line or the D-line. Again, it's it's, it's it's such a collective. It's, you know, you want to talk about specific people and positions. To me, you know, left guard's a big need. That's kind of the one spot on the O-line I would categorize as a big need. D-line, there's probably more there, no tackle and things like that. So I think they're both pretty important. 
Yeah, and we 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 hit a lot on that in this earlier in the show. So rewind a little bit back in there. We had a good discussion about uh, trenches. Run by you again. Had a comment that I I that I can't get back to in, in access, but I think was talking about Jalen Carter looking good but not being consistent enough. And I think he had a comment about uh, what was his name, Robert Kimdiche. I, I forgot how you say the guy's name, but uh, a concern there that he's a bit more bark than bite, I guess. Uh, I, there was something floating around, I think last week about character or something. I, I don't know. Look, I mean, uh, once again, uh, uh, we have Jonathan Hytrader now on, on staff that, that, you know, does a lot of the, uh, leg work during the Steelers season when it comes to draft. Alex and I are so busy on the site that we have to stick with, you know, Steelers in season stuff, uh, until the end of the season. Now, obviously we both watch college football on, on Saturdays and, 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 you know, have, have a general good idea, but we have not scratched the surface as going deep on any of these players yet, you know, so it's just not what we do It's not what we've done. We usually, we usually get it all started with the senior bowl and all like that. So for me to sit here and, and, and specifically com- comment on, 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 totality thoughts on one player I it, I, w- I would be doing all of you an injustice right now if I did that because I've got so much you know I, I barely have scratched the surface on several of these guys I know them by name I know some clips of them but I haven't gone deep enough on them yeah same here but we'll be doing that more postseason and Jonathan's doing a great job with his bowl previews you can check out there's one already set for the morning uh, it was one that went up earlier today that that talks about some of the notable prospects come bowl season uh, let's see. Next question comes from. Let me scroll back up. Uh, where was it at? Uh, Narcissistful says, "I think we should try to sign Roquan Smith." Your thoughts? I'm betting Baltimore feels the same. I don't think they're going to send that two to uh, Chicago and let Smith, who's played great for them, walk. So if he hits free agency, have that have at it. It's like that Tremaine Edmonds conversation. But I'm guessing he'll be a Raven for a long time. I feel like he's going to be as well. Mike Adesso says, offseason plan in three steps. Uh, give the bag to Deron Payne out of Washington, the D-tackle, and inside linebacker David Long Jr. in Tennessee. Bring back Bud as the number three outside linebacker on a cheaper cheaper deal. Uh, your thoughts, Dave, what are your thoughts? I'm sure you love the David Long. What do you think about Payne and a reunion with Bud Dupree? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to dive a little bit deeper into Payne to, to, to see what's going on there. Uh uh, as far as Bud Dupree as the as the three, look, they need they need a they need some youth in there. Yeah. No 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 offense to to Bud Dupree, but he has had a few more injuries since he's left Pittsburgh, and uh, also your number three outside linebacker is probably going to have to play special teams at least uh, to start with, and that ain't Bud Dupree right now. So there's several reasons to think that they won't go. Uh, an outside linebacker with age on him, uh, such as Bud Dupree for, for, for many reasons. They, the best way for them to attack this is, is through the draft plain and simple, uh, there, you know, second, third, fourth round or something along those lines, go try to find the next Alex Highsmith out there. You know, the funny thing thinking about, about Alex Highsmith, uh, uh, today, Alex, uh, remember, it was ahead of uh, it was the East West Shrine game, wasn't it? And Tom Mead, our own Tom Mead, uh, wrote up I don't know what was it eight players or ten players to watch uh, that the Steelers might be interested in uh, in the in the East West Shrine game, and Alex Highsmith was on that list. And uh, moving forward to that, remember that he kind of got lost in the shuffle with kind of how they were using him sure. uh, on that defensive line. They were trying to make him kind of like a, a five tech or a three tech or something. Right. He was a base uh, end before his last year. Right. And, but the Steelers were able to do a good job scouting and see through it that, Hey, this guy can stand, you know, this guy can, this guy has edge potential there. So that's kind of maybe what they need to look at this year. Is there this guy out there that's going to kind of maybe get lost in the shuffle uh, like an Alex Highsmith third, you know, that you spend a third round draft pick and, and develop and uh, be your depth guy. I think that's the way that you go there. On screen now, number 95, Alex Highsmith pull up the Tom Mead article from January 2020. Eight players to watch for Highsmith on that list with the comments that Debo Sweeney had about that great game that Highsmith had against that Clemson squad. And so that was a great call by Tom and turned out to be 100% accurate. 
Was that shrine? Was that the Shrine Bowl? Yep, Shrine Bowl. Yep, on oh, okay. screen. Yep, that was the Shrine or Shrine Game. I guess it's not the Shrine yeah. Bowl. The, it, it was the, the it used to be the East West Shrine Game forever, and now obviously it's out here in Vegas, and they call it the uh, the East West Shrine or the East West Shrine Bowl. I guess now marketing people, man. You gotta right. sometimes right. these marketing people they gotta tweak things. All right, back to the questions and comments. Almost a hundred people here in the chat, so appreciate that. Hopefully we can hit triple digits before we wrap up. John Horvat says coming into the draft, Connor Hayward was supposed to be a fullback tight end. Uh, type of guy we haven't seen him with a carry yet do you think there's ever plans to give him carries no i don't think so outside of emergency emergency situations or maybe some sort of weird jet sweep play sometimes that happens with tight ends but i think he's a, a tight end more of the athlete more of that you know he's just not been used as a running back and so i think the plan is to to use him in his current role yeah and uh you know he's not going to be you know an end of the line guy you know he's going to be kind of the role that he has had this year and probably not much more than that. Right, right. I think he'll be a chess piece used with his versatility and overall athleticism. Hopefully his pass catching ability is used more than some of the core split flow blocking he's done. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're, they're trying to use him in a split flow. It doesn't work well. When he no. cuts, it's okay, but uh, not great. Also on Tom's uh, shrine list here, Calvin Throckmorton, still one of the best names ever. He's, um, where's Throckmorton at? He's around. Pittsburgh just saw him, didn't they? Baltimore? Not Baltimore. He oh, was even he was Atlanta. with someone that they just saw. Uh, uh, Saints, wasn't it? Saints. That's that's what it was because they had those injuries there to their center right. of guard with Ruiz. Okay, there it is. So there's there's Throckmorton on that list. Anyway, that's uh, useless. Who else? Who else is on that list? Uh, I actually those were kind of the only two two names um, uh, guys that I hadn't heard of. I'll scroll through it. I, this guy is he in Detroit? McKelvin Agum Agum is he in Detroit? Yeah, I remember the name. I don't remember where he's at right now. If he is at. How about Isaiah Bugs in Detroit doing some big things uh, up there? Becoming a sure leader is. for him. Uh, Deshaun Dixon, a guard from San Diego State. No idea. Miles Dorn, North Carolina. Uh, there was High Smith. Patrick Nelson from SMU. Aaron Parker, Rhode Island. He was briefly in the league, I can remember. And then uh, Throckmorton and this tight end. Was Dominic Wood Anderson the Steeler for like two seconds? Was he a rookie tryout guy? Mm. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. Anyway, anyway. Uh, getting back here, Cody says, do you think making a run out at Elton Jenkins would be smart since this tackle class is pretty lackluster? Again, I hate to keep answering these the same way, but I assume the Packers are going to want to keep that guy. He's been their best lineman. He's been extremely versatile, played every everything for him. Uh, are there, is Aaron Rodgers going to want to see that guy go? I doubt it. So if he's available, sure, but getting to that point is, is 90% of the battle. It feels if there's a new tackle that's going to come to town, it's going to be through the draft. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Now I'm getting, now I'm, don't you hate, was Dominic Wood Anderson ever a stealer as a tryout guy? I want to say he was, but I could be 100% wrong about that. So now I have to look that up. Um, That's going to bug the heck out of me. Where, where did Wood Anderson go? Not, does not look like Pittsburgh. Seattle. Okay, maybe I'm just, I'm making stuff up here. It anyway. didn't, ring a, didn't ring a bell for with me. All right, getting back here on track, uh, Steelers dose of reality. Alice, can you s explain about our effective cap and what is not in it yet? I'm not 100% sure on what's being asked there. That's a question for Dave, though. The effective cap and what is not in their effective cap. Oh, uh, well, look, when, when you talk about uh, effective cap space, you're talking about, uh, look, the, the, the NFL calendar, you, you got to look at it in, 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 in several different stages here. Obviously, you have the off season before the new new league year starts, uh, which is in, 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 in March. During the off season, you obviously build your roster out to 90 uh, and you know, you really can do whatever you, you, you want. I mean, it works off of a rule 51, but you don't have to be cap compliant. Uh, with that rule of 51 until the new league year starts. So that 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 that's lying in the uh, line in the sand number one there. Once you get past that, you have to uh, think about effective cap space. Meaning, okay, well we've got this draft class coming in. And we, it's going to account for this much much of money. You got to account for a 52nd and 53rd player once the rule of 51 goes away uh, on week one of the season. So that's more money that 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 you have to account for there. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you have to kind of project how much cap space is the team going to want to have free once the season starts. And I get a lot of pushback from this every year. And I, I, 
I'm, I'm, I've been right, right, Alex? I mean, it's mm -hmm. been around uh, eight or nine million dollars. Sure. You say, oh, they won't want to. They're not going to want to have that much cap space. And lo and behold, the last two seasons, it's been, it's been, you know, it, it that's been to deal with that. So you have to, you have to prepare for. Okay, they're going to want to. You might as well count that as a nine million dollar cap charge because that's how much they they. They're going to want to go into the season with, and then you're going to have to project. Okay, uh, you know how much, how 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 many million is going to be on IR, counting against your cap come week one of the season. A couple, two or three million, you got a budget there. So you move this thing along in stages, and so like when I do an update, say, I don't know, uh, let's say in March or no, let's say May, uh, I'm going to have Look, this is where they're at now, but you better better remember that this is coming down the you know down the pike here. Uh, it might not be right away, but it's going to have to be accounted for sooner or later. And that's when you get into current actual you know uh, in the moment cap space versus effective cap space. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So still a lot to uncover and and project out right as we go forward. Heading into tons, the league year, okay. tons. Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, uh, you know, it's the same charges every year. You know that, uh, but you have to. I mean, not the same charges, but it's the same categories that you're mm -hmm. trying to project every year. But there is a level of of, of projection, knowing that this is coming, that you got to be able to afford it. Yeah, you're you're nine million. You, let's say you're four million under the cap at in 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 May. Well, you got a you got a nine million dollars in cap space. You got to account for come week one of the season. So that's why you have real time versus effective cap space. So people will know, okay, well, this is where we are now, but this is where we're right. going. And we got to be able to, to, to account for that at some point. About 10 minutes left, a couple of super chats. And I want to try to get through as many questions as possible. $5 super chat from Tim Chase says, what will Liao's position be? Reminds me of when we couldn't figure out Mike Rabel. Yeah, I wrestle with that. To me, he's not really a, a consistent, you know, three down front defense lineman. He's an interior sub package pass rusher and nickel and dime, I think he's. I think he's really should become an edge guy. It, it maybe play that hybrid role. I think using him in just one way, especially if that is an interior. kind of a Leo role or what? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say like Bruce Irvin, but you know, just I think edge guy, kind of an elephant, <laughs> elephant package guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, that kind of goes back to what Seattle's done with Irvin and guys over the years. I, my, but I guess my point is to make him like a Cam Hayward or a Tuit or an Ogan Joby, where he's a consistent, you know, in your base defense, he's playing four eyes, taking on double teams. That's not going to be how Liao succeeds. I think if you try to use him there consistently, not going to get good results. I think he actually is kind of more of a situational sub package guy, and I think he could have some value as that big edge that's going to be tough for tight ends to handle. How much weight do you rec reckon he could drop? Well, again, I mean, he was like 270 at AM last year. Pittsburgh drafts him. He got his weight up. I think he wanted to be at 295, 300. I don't think he, he doesn't look like he's 300 pounds right now. I think he's probably dropped again to play some of that edge stuff. Um, I think I think he plays two seventy is probably a good weight for him. That's, that's All right, my good. Uh, that would be an interesting question for this team right after they wouldn't answer it probably, yeah. but uh, uh, because it is a you know you hear these all you hear these suggestions all the time. Well, they should turn this guy into into this position. That this is a legitimate question when it comes to this guy. I think. Yeah, I think you know he's a little position list that that was the knock on him coming out, and I still think there was an, there's an issue. There's some value in there because he's a good athlete, but. Putting him in the one box, regardless of what that box is, is not going to be good for him. Five dollars super chat from Jay Will. Should they consider signing Andre Dillard from the Eagles to, to give competition a tackle? This lets a first round focus be on D line or corner. You know, Dillard's going to be a name. He's going to likely be a free agent from Philadelphia. My artist left tackle there. Uh, I'd rather either go either go big and get a, a clear replacement for more, or get a clear backup behind more. In between, it's a little tricky of a line to walk. Right. I I still think. That if they go, if they, if they bring a tackle in, uh, that that I I, I really think it's going to be via the draft if they do. Sure, uh, sure. To I want that. want one to start, you know. I think it could be a veteran cheap guy, but in terms of an actual option, I'm with you. I think uh, the, the draft. Uh, let's see. There was a comment from Randy Wagner. Uh, where were you guys during the immaculate reception? He watched it at his cousin's house in uh, Monaco, PA, but the game wasn't televised. Uh, I was uh, not a person for about 20 years. Uh, Dave, where were you in 72? Uh, I was in Pensacola. I was like, uh, what, uh, four, four and a half? 
All right. So neither of us have good recollections of the uh, immaculate reception. I take it. All right. All right. There you go. I mean, obviously, growing up, I mean, I, I, be, you know, I, I, around four or so is when you know I, I started kind of rooting against my dad's Dallas Cowboys and all, and became a, you know, Steelers fan at that time. But I mean, at four, you don't have a, you know, recollect recollection and uh, of things like that. Now, obviously, once you know you just get into six, seven, eight years old, and you, you know, that's your team. It it, it goes without saying that. Uh, that that history at that time, which was recent history, back when the Earth was cooling, uh, you obviously knew about. So I mean, I've, I've 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 obviously known about the Immaculate Reception since way before I was what ten years old. But uh, as far as having recollect recollection about the actual, you know, December twenty third, nineteen seventy two, no. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see. I saw a comment from our buddy Russ Obenstein says, in late, what's up, Alex, Dave, and chat? Good to have you here, Russ, and happy holidays to you. Hopefully you're feeling okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Russ, wish you were asking if it's mental for, for Harvin. Hey, Harvin has been better. It's not been, I think, ideal or where it needs to be, but he has been better this year compared to last. It's hard to know for sure. I think mental is an easy thing to look towards, and that's certainly maybe even more of a factor for specialists. Um, I think it's just about... To be a good specialist, specialist, you have to have a really strong and consistent technique. Just that repeatable stroke, you have to be dialed in every single time, and that can be tough to do. It's not like a tackle who gets next rep, next play to go make their uh, correct their mistake, fix their error. With with punters and kickers and snappers, you get a couple chances a game. You better be on the money every single time, and that can be tough to do. So I don't know. That's kind of my thought, though. They need to bring somebody in during the offseason to push him. I think their intent was this summer to not have somebody push him to try to give him more confidence. So I wonder, but at some point you can sit there and say, well, we have to eventually bring in competition for you. Mm-hmm. But I think this summer, because they only had one punter for large portions mm-hmm. of this year. So I think that, that was them trying to give that vote of confidence to Harvin. Couple he, more, needs, he needs competition. They need somebody they can turn to. A couple more questions here. Uh, should we go tackle in the first and use the Chicago pick to get a corner or vice versa? Uh, in my opinion, we need immediate talent in both, but we might not get it with this capital. That's some great one zero three. It's hard to say. It's hard to talk about those things in a vacuum before free agency without seeing names on the board and in the whole class as a as a whole. So it's hard to really sit there and strongly feel they have to do one over the other. We agree the trenches is, it has to be priority, but again, answering those things in, in broad terms is difficult to do. A lot of you probably ain't going to like it either. This team somehow finds a way to win these final three games. <laughs> right. They're going to be picking like uh, 18th or 19th or something like that uh, in, in, in in the first round. And a lot of those uh, premier tackles go off the board way before then. Yep, 100%. And so that, that happened with, um, with Najee, right? Najee was... 24th overall, and the pick right before him was Christian Derrissaw at 23, that last good tackle, and they went Harris uh, instead. Uh, Todd says, not a single target for Muth. Why? I'm not concerned. He ran 17 routes. It was a run-heavy game. He had that foot injury. They ran, they threw the ball outside quite a bit. Deontay was the guy yesterday. In this offense, It's it rarely are two guys going to have you know big individual games. Usually it's one guy having the big game, other guys in, in far smaller roles, and Friar Muth has generally been in that bigger role, and yesterday just just did not. And he missed a lot. He missed practice, you know, two, two, at least two days, right? Didn't he? Yeah, Wednesday and Thursday last, so. last week. So I mean, not that that's huge, huge, but I mean that that foot was obviously not one hundred percent for for him. And they, you know, uh, like you said, look, they the onus was on you know making sure to try to run the football. And as Alex said, you know, Deontay Johnson, it was it was in the plan or it became in the plan to to get him the football there. So I, I'm I'm not I'm not too overly concerned about it. You just want him to get healthy right now. Yeah, when you're not practicing early in the week and the game plan's being installed and there's some uncertainty about how much you're going to play, then you know, you're know you probably not going to be involved a ton. And again, the dude ran 17 rounds. They ran the ball 45 times. You know, do the math there. Uh, Daniel, how can Witherspoon be out for so long as he did not injure his ACL, MCL? This dude is a history. I don't know. This dude is a history. I don't know if it has a history or what that's supposed to be. With the uh, hamstring. Well, hamstrings can be tricky, man. You, you pull those things and... Um, Eventually, they had the clear spot, so it's a little bit strange, but the hamstrings can can take you a long time to get back from. There's no way I bring him back at four million. He's 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 going to have to be a cut, and probably not pay cut. You're thinking just straight up cut. I'm thinking straight out cut. You you probably want to do that. You would probably want to re-sign Cam Sutton before you cut Witherspoon. Right. Like as Cam signing his contract, you're releasing mm-hmm. Witherspoon would probably be the the process there, just to just in case. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, David O with some numbers on Matt Spath. 55 career NFL receptions, 47 his last year in Minnesota, only 42 with Pittsburgh. So he had more in Minnesota his last year than his entire Steelers stint. There's some Chicago time in there. So there you go. Uh, what's changed on the offense since the bye week that's allowed the run game to work so much better? Is there a secret? I don't think it's a secret, Dave. No, I think just continuity, them playing yeah. together more. And uh, uh, look, I, uh, take this however you will. You know, the Panthers, Panthers front's okay, but they have been run on this year, you know. Uh, I mean, the last couple of games in, in general, uh, I, I just, I mean, look, you, you do your research on this year as well, too. <laughs> How many teams have had all five offensive linemen start every game? Not is Pittsburgh the only one? I know there was that they continuity might, might. thing. I don't, yeah. they, they were like the second best continuity O line. I don't know if the first place team, I assume they probably had all their starters playing though. I mean, look, you get those guys, you know, getting that many amount of snaps together, you would hope they'd get better, right? Sure. And, a young group. Uh, and, and look, uh, in this game against the Panthers, you know, I think you kind of hit on it or have a video coming or whatever, what left, left side, uh, left side of that line. Uh, well, that was your terrible take today. Uh, yeah. Josh Carney had a film room on it though. Right. Uh, left side of that line pl- played play pretty damn good. Might have been the best uh, combined game of those two of Dan Moore and, 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 and Kevin Dotson this season. I'm with you 100%. Cup more, Jabari Wilson. Uh, do you feel any better or the same about Trubisky than you were earlier in the year coming off this game? It was a good game. He, Go he, he, he is what he is. Yeah, I was just saying. I mean, is he, what, do you, what do you say? Tiger doesn't change his stripe? Yeah, the, the, the Tiger doesn't change his stripe. He, he is who he is, and he that, that that's who he is, and that's what he's going to be. Yeah. Uh, the rest of it. If there's been anything that's been a that's been a real positive development, I guess overall f- uh, with Mitch, is his deep ball completion rate has gone up a little bit over what it has been for his career. Uh, so uh, that if there's a positive, it's that he's completing at a slightly higher rate statistically on passes more than 20 yards down the field than he has been for his career. Yeah, but it's only been a marginal improvement, right? I think. Right. And it helps when George Pickens is catching those passes. Sure. Uh, it makes you look a little bit better as your quarterback. Ross Swisher razzing me a bit about Isaiah Bugs. Yeah, I don't think Bugs has been putting up huge numbers, but he's playing. I think he's playing, I guess, reasonably well and has become a leader for that Detroit team to try and build a culture under Dan Campbell. And so for as, for as bad as Bugs looked in Pittsburgh, just a mess mentally seemed to be, to me, a little self-absorbed. Always had that big... 96 chain even though he was the backup on the sideline just didn't love the look there um, I think kudos to him for uh, finding a home in Detroit seems to be going better there than it is in Pittsburgh at least a uh, question from uh, narcissistful why didn't the Steelers know about William Jackson's back before they traded for him they knew about it they just cleared him and right. they realized that's probably a mistake and I bet you that's why Ola didn't get signed. They said, we're not dealing with necks and backs again. We are not. We've been down that road once before. We're not going to do that twice. Ola apparently worked out for the Jags today, so can't be that hurt, I guess. Uh, Let's see if we have time for anything else. Let me just check here quickly. And Thank you guys for being here and hanging out with Dave and I. Packers versus Rams tonight. Aaron Rodgers versus Baker Mayfield, just like we all thought it would be at the start of the season, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there was a comment, I can't find it, about Kevin Colbert making a mistake by basically shoehorning in a quarterback because he wanted to leave his team with a franchise quarterback, and that was a big reason why they went pick it. You know, I can, I, I think he certainly had that feeling that he wanted to get a quarterback as he left. My frustration is, and I know it's all spilt milk, decisions been made, I just didn't love that he was the GM of this team through free agency and through the right. draft to me. And I was, we were one of the few people making that point. Most people were right. okay with that. I think, you know, him retiring, you leave in January, you let the new regime take over to start that off season, especially in a critical off season like that, as you're building the future, looking for a quarterback, let that decision be in the hands of the new GM immediately, as opposed to them inheriting that. I didn't love that. I think Pittsburgh is paying some sort of cost and price for that now. Yeah, look, uh, we had a lot of conversations about that, Alex. You know, uh, if, 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 if why why stick around that you know that long when you're not going? You know, you, you're you're buying the groceries there, and you know somebody else has got to eat it now. Right, and and I understand. You know, that was their process, and Omar Khan's in house, and he was obviously working with Colbert. But no other team does that. Everyone said, look at the Ravens, and the Ravens did not. They made their change in January when they went from Newsom to DaCosta. Uh, the Packers did the same when Ted Thompson uh, stepped down. He did that in January right after the season ended before an offseason began. 
Uh, the only time that's ever happened in terms of that mid-season GM change is usually for bad reasons, like when Mike McCagnan got fired by the Jets and Adam Gase basically took over and it was a whole big mess with Love Bell's contract and things like that. So um, again, spilt, spilt milk, new offseason for Con and Weidel, but I did not love that process then and I do not love it now. All right, that's going to wrap up today's stream. Appreciate you guys being here. Great t- uh, turnout and hopefully... Next time we talk, we're still talking about the chance for playoffs, although we'll we'll see how that looks. But hopefully you guys have a great Christmas, great holiday season. And uh, Dave, as always, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays and uh, peace and love. All right, you can catch an archive version of this on the site here in just a little bit, which I have to get a draft ready for. So I will do that after this ends. And uh, we'll talk to you guys in a couple weeks. Appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.